I've done the GP training now, um, just coming towards the end of my third year, so near, near completion. Uh, so I've been a GP now, a GP trainee uh, for the last four years. Um, so it should be a three year training programme, but I took an extra year uh, to do an out of programme experience as a leadership fellow in primary care, which is really interesting. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing this for four years now. So I'm in my third year of GP training now, the third and final year. Yeah. So I have been a GP registrar for three years now, um, just coming to the end of my, my training. So I'm a GP trainee, um, I'm currently in my second year, I'm just about to start my third year in August. The quality has been excellent and I've really, I've really enjoyed it. Um, you do for your GP training, you do 18 months of hospital jobs and you do 18 months of um, GP jobs. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it, what can, what can I say? Yeah. Um, so I think the level of quality um, across the whole of the UK is fairly good in general practice because you get quite a lot of one-to-one -one supervision, you get an allocated trainer who kind of supervises you fairly closely, so you get a lot more feedback on your performance I think from my experience and when I worked in hospital. Um, locally speaking, because obviously that's my own experience, it's always been very high, so I've had some excellent trainers who've been really helpful, um, uh, I've had a good relationship with them and, and they've been really um, easy to speak to if I have any problems. And actually every day you can speak to someone about a patient if you've got concerns. So as a, as the quality of training I think is very high actually. Yeah. I think it's excellent. The um, variety of jobs that you do in the hospital before you go on to GP training, sort of the GP posts, um, give you really good experience for, for working um, in the community as a GP. Yeah, so, so positive, well organised, they like you to ask questions if you're stuck um, and they, they haven't been annoyed by that, they quite welcome sort of any queries to just email in, they'll get back to you quite quickly, um, so it's all been really positive I think. Uh, the training scheme's good, um, I think it helps that it's actually fairly small so you get to know your peers quite well um, and you get to know the training programme directors and the administrators quite, quite readily so it feels quite a close-knit group, so if you have any issues, you can go to speak to someone and they know you, uh, which I think maybe in maybe larger training schemes, um, that sometimes falls by the wayside. They prepare you for the real world out there, because you have that exposure to the real patient that you tend to see. And the quality depends on, obviously, what practice you're working at. But based on my experience, I've had actually had an enjoyable experience working as a, a GP training, especially in this area. One of the best things about the training scheme um, in Hull is the the, um, the, the hospital jobs that, that you do as a trainee. So A&E, um, palliative care, psychiatry, they're all jobs that are really useful for, for GP and not all um, sort of GP training schemes do, do the same jobs. I've really enjoyed all my placements to be fair. Um, I've had quite a good variety in that I had my first year and a half of placements in hospital and then I moved for my final year and a half all in GP. So yes, um, I had all of my hospital placements initially. I had four placements in hospital rather than just three. That I really liked as well. So I had four months in uh, respiratory medicine, four months in mental health, four months in elderly, and then I did six months in A&E. So I felt I got a really good wide range of coverage of the curriculum as well as exposure to different types of patients. Uh, and then within my GP placements I've had an inner city Hull placement for six months and then a placement outside of, of Hull. Um, so lots of, sort of hands on uh, experience but lots of support to go along with it. You, you, you're in the deep end from day one and I think that that's the best thing for it. At the moment, um, I can't wait because at the moment I'm doing my hospital rotation at the moment and um, one of the things that I enjoy in terms of being a GP trainee is the fact that you have a lot of exposure to different, different things. Um, things that I wasn't even aware of that in terms of finances, how to manage a practice, in terms of developing relationship with a patient. And in terms of things that you don't even expect, that patient will come to you to discuss in terms of financial advice, mar marital advice, and other things as well. So really, it's like you get into the nitty-gritty of getting to know your patient properly.
Yeah, so uh, Leadership Fellow is kind of a newer scheme that was set up by um, the Health Education England uh, body to try and get more trainees involved, the leadership experience and management experience maybe early in their career to give them kind of the tools to, to kind of develop now rather than wait till they get to the, the point in their career where they need them. Um, so that was really interesting to kind of see general practice from a different perspective, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. So we have got um, weekly teaching sessions um, and when when you're in teaching with all your GP all the other GP registrars it's a really great opportunity to talk about things that you're finding difficult at work, um, things that you're enjoying, how you you're getting about sort of revising for your exams. So yeah, you do form really really close friendships with uh, with most of your colleagues. Yeah, we've got um, on a Tuesday afternoon we have our VTS which is the vocational training scheme teaching and so we all tend to gather on a Tuesday afternoon and that's as well as formal teaching that we have, we have some informal teaching and it's a way of meeting the others and um, getting to know getting to know other people in your in your group and in your year um, and that's been a lot of fun. And yeah, the general peer support is, is again, it's good and we, we catch up on a Tuesday every week because that's our allocated half day uh, release where we go for, for, for training and teaching and uh, so we, we catch up then and, and I think that's really helpful because obviously when you're in training the practice you're actually on your own generally away from your colleagues so to catch up once a week is, is helpful. The half day release it's it's obviously an educational opportunity but it's again more about just seeing your friends that you haven't seen for a while and just chatting how and catching up on how they're getting on. Um, coming from Hull and York Medical School we few of my colleagues stayed in the region so I've made very I've made good friends with them and also if you've met few people that came from different regions as well which they sort of have the same aims and objective in terms of what you want to achieve. Uh, which, as a GP trainee, we all need each other really. You tend to meet up more and get to know people even, uh, even better when you're doing exam preparation. And I know that's probably quite scary, but um, you meet on a regular basis and it not only makes kind of preparation fun, uh, but you get to know other people. So I've been out for meals, go to the cinema, catch up with the gossip, it's a good way of networking and knowing people as well. A bit of a trade secret, um, so a lot of the, the trainees will kind of pick friends in their own year group who are maybe studying for their exams and then they'll take some case studies away and they'll go through them and practice with each other and sort of see and give each other feedback of, of being you know, role playing between the doctor and the patient um, as, a, as a preparation for the exam. That was one of my big concerns whenever you move to primary care, how isolated you're going to be. However, I find that there is just a different team here. It's not really isolating at all, but it does make you enjoy your half day release when you can catch up with everybody else and see whether they're feeling the same things as you are. So yeah, I've made lots of friends uh, with other GP trainees and with other core medical trainees and core surgical trainees during my hospital placements. So I think the best thing of being a GP is about getting to know your patient. In a way, you can actually look at it in a way like having a, a bigger family because you tend to see the same people all the time. The best thing would be the relationship that you get to build with your patients. So be it just sort of with the fun four-year-old that you can make them enjoy coming to the doctor and not being afraid of that uh, experience, but also sort of with your older patients that you might um, find a problem, you're then there with them throughout that and dealing with the family and the extended support that they need. Um, that's been quite a, a big thing for me, that continuity and getting to know your, your type of patient, um, be that in the inner hall setting and be it also out here in a more sort of rural commuter area. Um, it's really nice when you make a plan and they come back and you're like, yep, that, that worked spot on. And you see that, that you've developed that trust and that rapport. So I think that's probably my, my favourite bit. The, the best thing about being a GP um, is the ability to influence uh, you know, and make a difference locally. So you're obviously in the community rather than in the hospital. So you get out and about and you make, meet the local people and get the feel of it. Uh, and then I think not only that, that you get the ability to sort of see patients when they're unwell and make them better and then see them at the end of that. So that kind of continuity and feeling like you've kind of made a difference um, is the reason I wanted to go into it really in the first place.
I think the best thing is the complete variety that you have. So somebody comes through your door every 10 minutes, you don't know particularly who's coming and what kind of problem they've got. Um, so it could be anything from a pregnant lady to an elderly person to a child. Um, so it's the complete variety that you have and it's, that's a real challenge but it's, um, it can be a lot of fun as well. I think one of the best things is just seeing lots of different people with lots of different conditions and you don't really get that in hospital medicine um, because you tend to focus on one sort of you know one specialty and, and you look at um, sort of the same conditions over and over again again and it's nice to have some repetition so and you, and you still get that in GP obviously some conditions are more common than others but I think just seeing a, a wide range of the population um, and seeing how different diseases affect different people in society differently. I think that's one of the most interesting things to work with. So I think we as a GP have the privilege to get to know our patient really well and also manage them effectively by combining both patient perspective and biomedical perspective together to really get a better outcome. Yeah. Being a GP does, it pays reasonably well but um, I suspect we're all like a little bit more but I think if you want to be a GP, you're not in it for the big bucks. Um, you're in it for job satisfaction. But I think you did get paid paid reasonably well for what you do. Um, it, I think it pays okay. I think it depends what you're going into general practice for. I think if you're going in it just for the money, um, there are lots of other jobs which pay well. Um, but I think in response to does it pay well, uh, I, th I think it, it will pay adequately and it will pay relatively well for um, someone who wants a good career earning a good salary but at the end ultimately it's rewarding and that's the reason I would suggest you would go into it rather than anything else. I think it pays well. Um, I have enough money that I want to live on um, and I can see of a bit. Also been in Hull, it's quite a good value city so you can easily get a, a nice house with a bit of a garden you know for a, an okay price i would say yes and also you have to take in consideration how busy gps are and the demand of work that is expected of gp and i think they can look into that aspect of what's the demand what's the expectation and will that compensate the money that's been paid for to gps at the same time they have to look at the aspect of the time that we spend to we spend a lot at our GP practice, you also be losing that time with our family as well, which you look at most jobs. There is an expectation, but they do have that nine to five job. But as GP, you don't actually finish the exact time you meant to finish. And after work, you, they've got other things that you tend to do as well. So in regards to pay, I would say it's difficult to answer that question. So I have nothing to compare to because I've never done any other jobs apart from uh, being a doctor. But I would say that um, you can have a very comfortable life on a, on a GP salary. There's, if, if you are very money focused, there's lots of um, room to do other things alongside GP practice. So you can work as locum, so you can, um, you can earn more money if, if you want to. Or if you want to enjoy your life a bit more and be able to spend more of your money, um, then you can, you can just do your, your usual job. You can, it's very flexible. So some GPs will work solid nine sessions a week, um, so like four and a half days, and others will do as little as two or three sessions a week and then do other things alongside it or not do anything else alongside it. So it is very flexible and um, different different people in different stages of their lives. So if someone's starting a young family, they might um, decide that actually it's not worth doing the full-time job and just have a few sessions. So um, yeah, it's, it's a, financially it's, it's uh, definitely not a bad career. Yeah, I've been, I find it really rewarding. I was, I know this is probably going out to medical students, but I've been qualified as a doctor many years, but I, and I went back to do GP training for the academic and the personal challenge. Um, and I've really enjoyed the academic challenge that is given and the personal challenge of completing something. But um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been great. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. Again, you know, you like like I said, when when a patient says that's that's worked great, I'll have a bit more of that. Um, oh, you've completely solved my problem there, doctor. But 
no I'm coming with this problem you know that's I find that really rewarding even for the the things that you can't quite solve um, you know being with people through their palliative care sort of having that continuity and, and looking after them knowing that you've allowed somebody to die with dignity and that their family has been able to, to feel that as well you know that's a really good thing to be able to give to a patient and to a family absolutely yeah um, you know you, you get the, the cliche you know patients come in and say you know just to say thank you because you've referred them for something or you've done something that's helped them and it's just such a lovely consultation when you see someone who you know you see them the first time they may be um, quite anxious or upset or obviously troubled by whatever they've, they've come in with and then you see them again a few few weeks later and you, you notice what a, a change there is so yeah definitely rewarding um, on, on many levels not not just for the patients so actually um, being around your colleagues who, who are seeing the same thing and learning from each other that's that's a really nice um, environment to be in yeah. It is from experience working at the GP practice you you see one of your patients comes in really unwell and then you, 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 it's like you're going through a journey with them because they come to see you every time they're unwell and trying to find solutions to their problems and other things. And then you see them grow and then getting better over time and then completely getting well. And, and it's very rewarding as a clinician because you've gone through that journey with them and to them it's very, and to the patient it's very important because they want to know that the GP is on their side. You know? So it's very rewarding in the sense that you, know, you see your patient comes to you unwell and then couple of mums or years getting better. You also grow with the young patients that grows up so they come to see you in a younger age and then they get older and so you have that relationship with them as well which is also very rewarding as well. So I, I would say overall um, it's rewarding as a clinician by seeing the positive impact they have on patients. I think the biggest challenge in being the GP is is also the one that gives you the most amount of satisfaction and that is the variety not knowing who's coming in it's it challenges you personally with some of the problems people have but also it challenges intellectually academically keeping up on top with the latest changes because it's changing all the time the challenge is also one of the positives as well in that there's such a variety you don't know what your patient's coming in with. You may not necessarily know what the problem is. You have to use a bit of time. You have to maybe do some more investigations and sort of communicating that to the patient. You know, uh, I don't quite know what this is at the moment, but let's do this. Let's get a few more bits of the jigsaw puzzle. You quickly notice the difference between when you work in hospitals compared to other practices that you have a lot less um, ability to get instant tests and instant access to information, for instance, blood results and x-rays. Uh, and so it can be quite a, a, quite a challenge because it's, it's so broad. You can see in a morning 13 different patients with 13 different problems from 13 different systems. And so you, know, you have to be fairly kind of good and easy to switch between different medicine and even in the same patient there's lots of problems going on at the same time. So that can be quite challenging clinically. Um, and I think it gives you got the pressure from not only the patient's demand but also the demand of the local CTG and their kind of ability to wanting to, to kind of guide you in terms of what they want you to prescribe or not. And also the, the NHS England and, and the COF targets um, set, by, set by NICE in terms of what we're kind of constrained to check as well. So there's lots of different pressures so that can be a challenge, um, not only clinically but also you know, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the biggest challenge for being a GP is the demand on the service. And as, and as you know, obviously, there's always news on, stuff on the news about the NHS with a lot of demands. And being GP being the first point of contact is the pressure on GP. The biggest challenge, I think it's a huge learning curve because as a GP, you can't say, oh, that's, you know, that's not my specialty. I don't, you know, um, I, I don't know what to do with that. Or you, you can say that, but you, you still, it's your responsibility, you have to sort it out. So in, in hospitals, so for example, when I did A&E, um, I'd often see people with something that's not life-threatening, but needs sorting, and it wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do with it and say to them, or write to the GP and say, 
please can you look into this? Um, whereas as a GP, it's your responsibility. So you can refer to your specialists at the hospitals, to your specialist colleagues at the hospitals, but you can't, um, you, you know, you still, you still have to sort it out. So um, you have to learn a little bit about everything and you have to be able to find out the information. So it's a big learning curve, but there is plenty of support about, so it's, it, you don't feel like you're isolated and by yourself. You, as being a, a trainee, you're very supported. It's um, I've been very lucky, and I'm in a very nurturing kind of practice that looks after that looks after its trainees. Um, so you're supported from your GP trainers to reception to a secretary. There is always somebody around that will know and uh, will know the answer to the question that you've got and if they don't know then we put our heads together and come up with it come up with an answer um, so we're supported obviously by giving direct feedback to our supervisor as a trainee um, so they'll be able to talk to you about how you're managing how you kind of getting through uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, similarly if there are any kind of other issues I mean they can bring, bring them in a practice meeting which could be then taken forward to either the LMC uh, or the CCG if necessary um, I feel really supported in this placement. Um, we have lots of people that we can ask, be that other GPs, be that other nurse practitioners who maybe work more with the social side of it as well. So they can, if there's, for example, somebody who we want or feel could benefit from a day centre placement or just needs a bit of extra support at home, we can easily just ask that side of the team for a bit more of the support. Again, with palliative care, we can easily ring up the Macmillan nurses and they'll, you know, arrange what they can. So I think we're supported really well. Um, you can discuss with your colleague that you trust. Or you also have your educational clinical supervisor, someone that's actually superior over you, which you can have a chat with as well. Um, so the support is there, but the key thing is not to bend yourself or ban yourself. It's to be able to know what level of competence and know what level that you are rather than having to ban yourself because you you have to remember that you're providing service to the public and if you ban yourself you cannot provide that effective service to the public. So my 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 to answer your question, you could discuss with your colleague the other places that you can go counselling to get counselling to really boost your, re-energise re yourself again. Also, you've got your family as well there to re-energise you also, which is very important. Yeah. Why be a GP in East Yorkshire? Well, I've lived now in East Yorkshire for probably about 20 years, so I know its population really kind of fairly well. It's a good place to live. Um, it's quiet, but on the other hand, it's easy accessible down to London or across to Leeds. Um, it's got a variety of things to do, so it's been the whole's been the city of culture. Not that I've done much, but it has been the city of culture. So there are lots of places to go out to eat. Um, there's lots of variety of housing, um, and I think it's an up and coming kind of area as well. I think um, well, I'd, I'd recommend the area first of all because it's a pleasant place to live. The house prices aren't too bad. Um, it's friendly and it's quite close knit community, especially general practice, so you get quickly get to know the, the area in terms of the local practices and, and, and the training schemes quite close knit. Right, so having, having studied from Hoang York Medical School, I had two options, either to stay here or to go to London, which I came from. I stayed here because I believe that when I first started, it was Hoang was completely different. Now Hoang is a multicultural place, provided a lot of places, um, a lot of things that you can do. It's very in a vibrant place, you know, recently City of Culture. And also the training programme is very good. Why be a GP in East Yorkshire? Um, I guess why not be a GP in East Yorkshire? I've been in Hull and East Yorkshire for 10 years now. Um, didn't really expect to stay, but you kind of see all the positives of why, why, why would you not stay? There's really good... Um, Hull itself is a great city. Uh, you can go walking easily in the walls, go up to the Mers, you've got the beaches, you've got good surfing in Scarborough, you can go cycling wherever you want. As I said before, it's a pretty um, good value city, so you can get, well, lots for your money. It's upcoming city, but you do have that one-to-one -one with the 
the team, the GP trainee team, which is very good rather than having to deal with bigger population and difficulty even get to hold of your clinical supervisor or educational supervisor. So the support here because it is it feels more of a family rather than an institution, a bigger institution, which you don't know where to go. East Yorkshire is, I think it's unique in some ways because it has such a varied range of sort of populations around and it's being having the skills to kind of to tailor your consultation and your management of patients depending on um, sort of their social life. I think that's, that's really interesting. Uh, it's also really friendly. Uh, certain little areas of Hull, they really get to know you and you can so I just walked on the street and people will will say hello to you, you know all the people in the shops and that's that's quite nice. That's me as a person, not me as a doctor that's worked in that area. So I feel, I really like that kind of small town type feeling, even though it's in a big city. Um, you've got great links, you can easily get to Doncaster Airport, Leeds Airport, trains to London are really quick. Um, so I think it's just a really good place to live. I think and as an area, again, it's really accessible, so you can, you can commute quite easily and um, I think you, that can help you have a, a decent family life if you, if you can commute. I would encourage a lot of people really just to test the waters by even coming to Hull, or just take a trip to Hull and see what they think. The people are very nice, from my experience. Um, so yeah, I, I would encourage them to stay, one, because of the programme, two, because of the uh, the upcoming city and three because of the less financial pressure you have compared to other big cities. Try it um, because I, I think you know uh, I've been really happy here settled down and, and you know bought property relatively reasonably priced got nice countryside pleasant sort of country walks uh, a bit of everything close to the coast um, the wage is relatively good comparatively to other parts of the UK in terms of general practice uh, and um, everyone's very friendly, so yeah, go for it. I specialise in general practice. So I specialise in general practice. I specialise in general practice. I specialise in general practice. I specialise in general practice.